Mr. Dan, you don't yet have any tattoos, do you? Not yet, but I have definitely been thinking about it. Mm, I think you've come to the right place because in this very episode, we'll be talking about a modern art form, the movers and shakers, and they've been trying to express their individualities through this modern art. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, we're going to be trying some food for the brave of heart also, right? Yeah, but you will be having a chance to try the stinky noodles. Stinky noodles, sounds yeah. amazing. And mm -hmm. after that, we're going to be cooling down with the coconut ice cream that's become very famous in Hanoi, right? Yeah, just talking about it sounds great already. But you know what? Actually, right now, we'll just go and have some rock and roll with a rock band named Wukong. All right. Okay, let's go. to sit with one of the very famous rock bands in Vietnam and they've been together for seven years all graduated from the Vietnam Academy of Music first could you give me a little bit of introduction about your names and your roles in the band kế bên MC xinh đẹp của chúng ta đó là Hoàng Hiệp là ca sĩ của bản nhạc Hồng Cung tiếp theo Hoàng Hiệp là anh Tuấn là chơi nhạc bass tôi tên là Hà quản lý của bản nhạc tiếp theo là Trần Thắng tay guitar cũng như là sáng tác chính của bản nhạc Hồng Cung Trần Hoàng Đức tay chơi chống của bản nhạc Chúng tôi thành lập vào đúng ngày 10 tháng 10 năm 2007. Thành lập ra ban nhạc chỉ để thi cuộc thi Tiger Translate uh, Rock Your Passion. Đó là cuộc thi cho những ban nhạc rock đầu tiên ở Việt Nam. Lúc đó thì có khoảng 50 ban nhạc. Cũng rất may là ban nhạc chúng tôi giành giải quán quân. Cái tên ngũ cung thì nó là một cái thang âm đạo của âm nhạc của Việt Nam cũng như là trên thế giới thôi. Ừ. Nhạc rock được yêu thích là bởi vì nó rất là thật. Nó bày tỏ tất cả những cái gì chúng tôi muốn nói. Sáng tác của chúng tôi chủ yếu hướng đến về đề tài về văn hóa dân gian Tây Bắc. Hiện tại bây giờ chúng tôi có được hai album. Album 1 là 365.000 là năm 2009 và album vừa rồi năm 2014 là album Cao Nguyên Đá là hai album đánh dấu mốc cái sự phát triển của chúng tôi. Trong những thời kỳ đầu thì thể loại chúng tôi theo đuổi đến đến giờ vẫn là progressive hard rock. Progressive rock là một loại đề cao cái tính solo của cá nhân. Chúng tôi chọn những chất liệu của Bắc Bộ. Đây là những chất liệu tương đối khó nhưng những chất liệu này lại là những chất liệu rất rock và kéo rất dài được cái chất liệu đó đến tận ngày hôm nay chúng tôi vẫn sử dụng những chất liệu như vậy. So could you give us an example of how you have combined between your traditional music together with your rock music? Trong những sáng tác của Vũ Cung thì ban nhạc có nhắc đến là một cái nét đẹp đó là nụ hôn ở trên một cái đỉnh núi của Phan Tiên Phan Si Phang. Trong đấy có một số câu như là Một thoáng mùa thu Cùng em lên vùng hoang vu Cùng đứng trên cao đỉnh Phan Si Phang không thể thiếu được cái sự đóng góp mà công sức rất lớn của ông nội tôi ừ. đó là nhạc sĩ trần tuấn long toàn bộ những cái lời bài hát là của ban nhạc thì đã ông chỉnh sửa ban nhạc có thay đổi cuộc sống của tôi gần như là hoàn toàn từ thời xưa là đây anh này đã đầu độc <cười> <cười> đầu độc rock từ khi tôi còn rất là nhỏ cho đến ừ. bây giờ thì tôi vẫn vẫn như thế vẫn như ngày nào đấy maybe we will listen to a piece of their music to see what they are doing right now you're watching Spicy Vietnam. Kia bát nấu tàu đọc đen chiền đá dặn lòng một chiều cuối đông. Kia bát nấu tàu sưởi ấm con người một đời rừng già núi cao hạt ngô nấy mầm mọc trên sỏi đá bật dậy bật dậy nghiến ra hạt ngô nấy mầm thương bé ở mộng đợi một mùa vàng ngóng chờ
plan on meeting any girls this evening? Uh, uh, I've got no plans yet, but... Uh, uh, because if you do, then I really would like to give you some chewing gum for it because we're going to try this special kind of paste that, Okay. Yeah, many it's girls... Not, is it... Run away from you right away. So it's shrimp, keep this shrimp paste, yeah. right? Shrimp okay, paste. well, I've tried it before. And you have? Yeah, well, uh -huh. I didn't really know what it was. Uh -huh. When I first tried it, I just saw it, okay, it's interesting colour, so I just... Yeah. Dumped it all on at once. Yeah. So this is a place that serves yeah, yeah. that sauce. Here we have, but when you come to Hanoi, this is something that you definitely have to try. It's a must. So here we have the shrimp paste. Huh? It's really beautifully colored, and you can see there's a little bit of oil on top of it. And now all that we have to do is just stir it up. Nice colours here. Yeah, you like it? A little like bit it? of oil on the top, mm -hmm. it's sitting on top there. Yeah. How's it? <laughs> he likes it. <laughs> he <laughs> That's the it. face of someone who likes it, yeah. Uh, it's strong, it's really yeah. unique. I need to mix it up with something else, yeah. so what would you say to do first? A little bit of tangerine. Okay. You know what? The Hanoians, when they do it, they use their chopsticks. Put your chopsticks up uh, like that. Ah, to so that you, the yeah, seeds. Yeah, all the seeds will stay up. Yeah. Uh, you want to try and add a little bit of chili, the chili in, and then I'll help you with the sugar. Thank you. Put maybe too many in there. He didn't make it spicy, right. and then he put we'll so much chili inside. <laughs> What's that going to do? All right. How's it now? Better? That's much better, much yeah. easier. So we're going to get the mat, and we're going to bring that. Chị ơi, mang giúp em mệt muốn đậu ra nhá. You can see that just only vermicelli and then the tofu, but we also have the spring rolls here, yeah. pork meat here. Mm -hmm. And then we also have, this one is called the zoe. This one is also the um, young rice cake. You want to try it now? All right, let's try it out. Mm. Mm. It's all right? Mm. Need to mix it again? You all right? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Tastes good. I'm gonna go for the black pudding one. Uh, shrimp paste. Mm -hmm. How's that? You like Excellent. it? Excellent. Thank mm. you for mixing it up. They have some peanut inside also. Vegetables. There's herbs, I think, mm -hmm. and then there'll be some peanuts also. Hey, this is amazing. And here you can see the tofu has been crispy fried. A little bit. Softer. Yeah, softer. Mm -hmm. People may like it. Let's see how it tastes here. Mm hmm. Mm. How is it? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Definitely the tofu from the Ma village because mm -hmm. it's much softer from the tofu that I've tasted before. The texture once you bite in is kind of it's kind of creamy. Yeah, right? yeah. Creamy. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so I'm gonna have a little bit of this meat. Mm -hmm. this is... You like to eat the fat part? We we usually just take the lean meat, but this has got all the fat, all yeah. the juiciness in it. Mm -hmm. I think this style is better actually. Yeah. It takes a little. I while don't to get know why, to. but many of my friends who are male, they really like the 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 fat part. Yeah. That's what the flavor is, I think. Yeah. But I think this one's more intimidating, if anything. With the right mixtures of flavors yeah. and tastes, mm -hmm. it's really fantastic. It's really tasty. Yeah. So, so far, which one do you like best? The, I like the, um, the black pudding one, actually. Oh, really? It's really, really good, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I like the, the tofu because the tofu here is really special. Mm -hmm. But no, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, well, it's a lot. Well, there's a lot here. I don't know whether we could finish it before your date. <laughs> well, to be honest, we don't need the date. <laughs> I've got the food, I'm full, let's go. <laughs> okay, that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna try and finish this off. So maybe yeah. we could share it with the audience to make it faster for us yeah, to finish. Yeah, we can. We can get a doggy bag maybe, <laughs> put it all in my pockets. I don't know, I can put mm -hmm. it in. I'm really impressed with you, Dan, for trying the shrimp paste and doing pretty, pretty well with it, actually. Well, I, I'm, I'm getting there. I, I still haven't got it quite right. Mm -hmm. It still needs a lot of mixing to get it mm -hmm. exactly how I want it. But Doan, thank you so much for introducing uh, the place to me. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so if you're in Tanoi, make sure you check out some bún đảo mắm tôm. It's absolutely fantastic. If you get used to it, just don't go for a date yeah. straight away afterwards. <laughs> go home, brush your teeth, and then come back. All right, mm -hmm. excellent. Dennis Wynn, who is the first Vietnamese person to be listed in the Atlas or the World Atlas of Tattoos. It's a list of the 100 most successful tattoo artists at the moment. Dennis, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Hi. How did your journey in tattoos begin? I um, um, love the tattooing uh, when I was 16. 16? Uh, when I was uh, in the collect art. I'm, I'm seen in the television, uh, a lot of tattooing uh, in the broker. You know, from uh, there, no, no magazine, no internet, no, no anything. At that time, yes, I'm, I'm found this button 
I did the tattoo on my on the machine. I did by myself. The machine, you know, small, small. Mm -hmm. Very ugly, very simple. You know, okay. Very ugly. <laughs> lần đầu tiên mình cầm máy xăm lên da thì là mình tự xăm lên da mình trước đó sau đó thì mới xăm cho khách hàng and which one was the first one on you right now yes oh when did you open the she tattoo shop mình thành lập si là từ năm hai không một không lúc đó là mình chỉ làm nhỏ ở nhà thôi thì lúc đó là thợ nữ cũng khá là ít mình cũng muốn nhấn mạnh vô là mình là người thợ nữ xong à, thì à. mình lấy cái tên gì mọi người nghĩ trong đầu á là thợ nam xăm đẹp hơn hay là chắc tay hơn nhưng mà sau này thì mình cũng không có đi theo cái con đường giống như là truyền cho những cái hình xăm cái sự mạnh mẽ hay ngầu ừ. gì đó mình muốn đi theo một cái hướng nó ngược lại một tí xíu một phong cách mới thì nó là màu nước ừ. một cái thể loại nhẹ nhàng thôi Từ nhỏ thì mình có niềm đam mê, rất là đam mê về vẽ Mình đi vào cái nghề xăm này rất là cơ duyên thôi Có lên mạng xem rồi tìm hiểu văn hóa này kia Làm thử cho bạn bè tự mình đúc kết kinh nghiệm và kỹ thuật riêng cho mình Theo chung á, thì à, mỗi người thời xăm nên tìm cho mình một cái phong cách riêng Để mà mình toàn tâm toàn ý theo đuổi nó Công việc này cần một sự nghiêm túc Cho nên mình cần khách hàng phải suy nghĩ kỹ Một khi đã quyết định cái hình xăm của mình Và mình phải có trách nhiệm với quyết định đó mình luôn đặt vị trí của mình vào khách hàng khi mà cần tìm tới tiệm của mình khách hàng sẽ cần gì và muốn gì em học vẽ từ bé vẽ rất nhiều thứ sau đó em cảm thấy cái nghề xăm là cái nghề mà vẽ mà không thể mà xóa được em muốn thử sức với cả nghề xăm sau đó em mới bắt đầu tìm hiểu về xăm và tự học How would you describe your style of tattoos you? Em là xăm theo phong cách hiện đại theo kiểu châu Âu Và những cái phong cách đấy thường nó liên quan đến cảm xúc, màu sắc Xăm ở Việt Nam là nó là một thứ rất là mới Và có nhiều người người ta chưa hiểu Và người ta chưa được nhìn thấy những hình xăm thật sự là tốt Thế nên là người ta có suy nghĩ rất là tiêu cực về hình xăm Càng ngày người ta càng nhìn thấy rất nhiều những hình xăm đẹp Và rất nhiều những hình xăm mà có rất nhiều ý nghĩa Thế nên là họ dần dần họ bắt đầu có sự tôn trọng vào hình xăm mà nó dường như là mở rộng một cái cộng đồng xăm rất là lớn Cái convention ở Đan Mạch mình được cái giải nhì The Best of Day Tất cả những giải thưởng mình đạt được ở trong nước cũng như là ở nước ngoài á Mình nghĩ cái đó là cái thành công nhất mà nghệ sĩ mong muốn về mặt ý nghĩa thôi mặt tinh thần thì nó làm cho mình phải cố gắng hơn nữa Mình phải xứng đáng với những gì mà mình đã nhận được Khi mà bạn xăm vào thì nó không thể nào mà tháo ra được Bạn hãy suy nghĩ thật kỹ xem nó có xứng đáng hay không Hay nó có đủ để bạn thay đổi chính bản thân bạn Đến bây giờ thì các cái kỹ thuật xăm được phổ biến từ nước ngoài rất là nhiều Đồ dùng bạn có thể dễ dàng mua từ những nước ngoài, những cái nơi mà chất lượng thật là tốt Sau đó bạn xăm cái hình tốt hơn Do you have any tattoos yourself? À, em không có hình xăm nào hết Không, không có hình nào hết But... <cười> You're a tattoo artist, you're designing these fantastic tattoos we can see everywhere But you don't actually have any of your own À cũng thế thôi, ví dụ như bây giờ anh biết đi xe máy thì kiểu gì anh cũng sẽ phải mua một cái xe máy để anh đi Chứ không thể mượn mãi được Nhưng có rất nhiều yếu tố và khi mà bắt đầu lúc nào hay không chắc chắn là sẽ có xăm nhưng không phải bây giờ. So I'm just uh, focus in uh, black and gray and follow Japanese style. Now I have some personal style. Personal style. <laughs> personal style. So what skills do you think you need to have to be a successful uh, tattoo artist? Mm. Just a passion. Passion. Uh, passion. Of course, art culture. Culture. I think right. because um, the tattoos and um, Mm -hmm. But it meaning in the in the pattern. So the artist tunic remember the meaning in the pattern. Right. When, when you're designing, when you design, so remember so the remember the meaning. The, the meaning, design, yeah. Right? Is a just um, practice and passion. Thank you so much, Dennis, for explaining a little bit about tattoos and your passion for design. And thank you very much, Spice. 
for a caramel and then coconut ice cream also. Sounds interesting. All right, I'm getting ready. So what, what are we in for today? Well, this shop has actually has been here for 21 years. Wow, OK. The most popular thing here would be caramel and caramel. coconut ice cream. But we can try a few things before we get to the coconut ice cream. Absolutely. I want to try all they've got. OK, so let's order some. Yeah, this is caramel. Yeah. Saigon, they call it banflang. But I'm not sure about this one. This is yeah, called sechua nip gum in uh, Vietnamese. Nip gum. This one has yogurt on top. And then that would be the black sticker rice in the bottom. Slightly fermented already. Fermented? Yeah. I'm just going to put some ice in. See? How it smells? Yeah. It's, it smells pretty sour. I actually like that. Yeah. It's really? awesome. Yeah. It's really nice, actually. Yeah. Do you want to try some? Yeah, see how it is here. I think it needs a little bit more ice. OK, cool. And actually, the yogurt is good. And then the fermented sticky rice is really good for your health also. So if it's not too sweet, then it's pretty good for your health. It's going to be better. All right. Yeah. Oh, how much I like that word. Wobble, 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 wobble. wobble. I don't want to wobble it too much or it's going to destroy it. <laughs> what is the liquid at the bottom? This is sugar caramelized. It's not an easy word. <laughs> The ones that I've tried in, uh, before in Saigon are actually a lot sweeter than this one. That's why I like it like this. It's not yeah. too sweet. A little bit uh, bitterness of the caramelized sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Perfect. Yep. Mm. So let's take a look. All right, so you want to grab a spoon? Sure. Get some coconut on that. All right. It's going to be messy, I think. Mmm. It's more like a vanilla ice cream inside a coconut with some fresh coconut on it. Yeah, I think it's mainly because of the coconut on the top. Yeah. Duan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here with me today. You've shown me some amazing things, some great dishes. And this one here, our uh, coconut, coconut ice, ice cream. cream. Yep. Fantastic. Just finish it up. Let's finish it up. OK, it might take a while. Mountain of ice cream. All right. Ah, uh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Get my shape. Mmm. Really, really good. Mm. You want the wafer? Kelly Clarkson, or even Adele, just to name a few of the very huge artists that this amazing person that I'll be talking with today has been working with. He's also a member of the International Dance Council, and the Vietnamese people know him a lot through his years working with So You Think You Can Dance Vietnam as a coordinator. And today is my great honor to be sitting here in person with Honey Abaza. Hi. How are you doing? I'm amazing. I feel great. Mm -hmm. Since when have you found that you have this great passion for dancing? Oh my god, that's a funny story, actually. I started really late. I started when I was 17 years old, actually. Oh. It's my best friend that danced, and I used to love going to watch her at her studio. I'd grab my bicycle, I'd go up to the studio, and I'd just watch her take class. I ended up being the studio mascot, oh. and I would go to all the competitions, and kind of, I kind of had no life. I would even borrow her videotapes and watch them at home, and I wouldn't try to do them or anything. I just, for some reason, I had, was drawn to this performance art, you know? And one day, she was performing on stage, and she didn't do very well. She was like, well, if you think it's so easy, why don't you do it? And I was like, I will. And I started dancing. And at that point, I, I think I, I found what love was, you know? Yeah. Well, wow, that's really spontaneous. Yeah, it is a little bit. <laughs> What do you think are the characteristics that are necessary for a wonderful best choreographer? Somebody who understands that choreography is not just making steps up. Someone who can create an ambiance and a world and something that you can watch to take any person out of their own world for a moment and escape reality. Um, and someone who can choreograph something beautiful or amazing or emotional or awesome or cool on anybody. 
Before coming up with any of your choreographer work, what is the first thing that you have to take into consideration? If I could marry them or not. Huh? Yeah. Before you get married, you have to date somebody and you yeah. have to get to know them and you have to know if you're... Before I even consider anything, I mean, is this gonna work really? Wow. You know wow. what I mean? Great. Yeah, I think that's my first mm -hmm. step before anything. What took you to Vietnam? Three words, John, We, Chan. He's been my best friend for a long time now. Yeah. I know him from Canada before yeah. he even came to Vietnam. He's really a big reason why I'm here. He opened that door and, and said, hey, my friend, is already part of the brand in Canada. He was a contestant. I was a contestant in Canada, yeah. uh -huh. believe it or not. And uh -huh. I also worked on the American show, so uh -huh. I knew the brand pretty well. So uh -huh. it was easy for him to introduce me to them, but yeah. it was a lot easier for me to come because he's pioneering so many things in dance here. And why not be a part of that and uh -huh. help because he needs help and everybody needs help and yeah. I need help. So what do you think about the dancing community in Vietnam in general? I think it's amazing and I think it's young with an old soul, and that's how I would rate it. Yeah, young with an old soul. What do you think it's going to head up next? I think that more importance in a union, maybe, and um, creating creating more opportunity for dancers um, to be paid a little bit more and to be respected artists a little bit more in that sort of way so that it becomes something conventional and it becomes a respected career as well, you know? I would love it to go in that direction. I would love people to have agents and be taken care of and not have to worry about contracts and it just to become more of a business as well because there's a lot in there. And what are your plans for 2016? This year, I'm only planning to go back to Canada for a couple of months and then I'm gonna come right back here. Yeah, more Vietnam and more growth in me, in love, in life and everything. I know that you have been able to work with many huge stars and artists. So is there any moment that you think that you could never forget? There's actually two moments I could uh -huh. never forget. Uh -huh. One of them is uh, with a, an artist from the UK. Her name is Florence and the Machine. She's so wonderful. That was a moment in my career where I was so nervous to perform because it was live. And the front row was like Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, Janet Jackson, and I did it. And it was amazing and it was the best feeling. And it was also one, the first time they had a big contemporary performance on the VMAs ever. So it was a big moment for contemporary dance. I think that's what added to the pressure, so. My second one wasn't even with a well-known artist that I'm sure any of you know, but it was, um, it was an amazing project because it was this man named Renato Russo, who is like the John Lennon of Brazil. Conveniently, he looks like my uncle. So I was hired to, and my dance ability came this much in it. I was hired to learn to a 20 minute set of his music in Portuguese. They put prosthetics on my face, made me look exactly like him, and filmed me. And um, I mean, I hope he rests in peace because he's not with us anymore. But basically they filmed me and made a hologram of me. And the hologram opened the Managaniche, which was the stadium in Brazil that held the World Cup that year. Thank you for sharing with us. And uh, it was great to have you here on Spicy Vietnam. Yeah. I'm Hany Abaza and you're watching Spicy Vietnam. Coming up next time, we'll meet Tofu, a singer and artist with a unique indie pop style. Let's also hang out with some of the top fashion models in Vietnam for a hot topic. Don't forget our hot food with one of Saigon's best Japanese restaurants, Sorai, and try some legendary pho. Finally, the exclusive interview with a music producer who is bringing contemporary musicals to Vietnam, Nguyen Cong Phuong Nam.